When he got on a plane in Portland, Oregon last night, he was just another passenger who gave his name as D.A. Cooper. But today, after hijacking a Northwest Airlines jet, ransoming the passengers in Seattle, then making a getaway by parachute somewhere between there and Reno, Nevada, the description on one wire service, master criminal. On the afternoon of Thanksgiving Eve, November 24, 1971, an unassuming man who appeared to be in his mid-40s dressed in a black suit, white shirt, black tie and sunglasses, paid $20 cash for a one-way ticket on Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305 bound for Seattle, Washington. The man would be later identified as D.B. Cooper. This would be the beginning of one of the greatest manhunts and unsolved mysteries in U.S. history. After boarding the Boeing 727, he ordered a bourbon and 7-Up while the flight was waiting to take off. At about 3 p.m., shortly after they reached their cruise altitude, he handed the stewardess a note indicating that he had a bomb in his briefcase and wanted her to sit with him. The stunned stewardess did as she was told. Opening up a cheap briefcase, Cooper showed her a glimpse of a mass of wires and red colored sticks and demanded that she write down everything he was about to tell her. Soon she was walking a note to the plane's captain, in which the swarthy man asked for four parachutes and $200,000 in $20 bills. Once he got his cash and parachutes, D.B. Cooper lowered the rear stairs on the Boeing 727, which is the only plane with that capability. Then the hijacker donned one of the parachutes, leaving his clip-on tie behind, as he leapt from the back of the plane and into the history books never to be found again. Or was he? That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here and welcome back to the channel. So back in 2016, the FBI officially closed the case of hijacker D.B. Cooper. They said having never found conclusive proof as to his identity, it was time to stop spending manpower and resources on the case. While there were a few suspects that the FBI strongly thought could be D.B. Cooper, the evidence wasn't there to prove it. So I thought since millions of people and internet sleuths the world over have their own opinions on who D.B. Cooper actually was, I thought we'd go over some of the most popular suspect theories out there, including one who was featured on a recent Netflix series, a man who many believe was indeed the infamous D.B. Cooper. So I'm sure as most, if not all of you know, this is the sketch of the infamous hijacker who called himself D.B. Cooper. But guess what? That's one of the greatest urban legends in U.S. history. Because as you can see on his plane ticket, he actually used the name Dan Cooper. He never used the name D.B. Cooper. Then where did that moniker come from that has lasted over 52 years? And where did it start? Well, in his haste to be the first to get this once-in-a-lifetime story out to the wire services, Portland, Oregon Journal reporter James Long had a source inside the Portland, Oregon Police Department. Immediately following the hijacking, when Portland police began searching their local crime files for a white male about 40 years old named Dan Cooper, they got a hit on a local Portland criminal who was 40 years old and went by the name Dan Boyle Cooper or D.B. Cooper. So when reporter James Long called his source at the police department, the detective told him they were on their way to pick up D.B. Cooper. Well, that D.B. Cooper turned out not to be the hijacker, but once James Long, who was indeed the first to get the scoop, sent his story out to the wire services with the name D.B. Cooper, the legend was born. And even when the other news services found out about the hijacker using the name Dan Cooper, not D.B. Cooper, they decided to keep D.B. Cooper instead because they said it just sounded sexier. So then why did the hijacker use the name Dan Cooper in the first place? Where did that name come from anyway? Well, the general consensus is that he got the name from a French comic book that wasn't even published in the U.S. This is Dan Cooper. Dan Cooper is a French-Belgian comic series about a fictional Canadian military flying ace, skydiver, and rocket ship pilot. The character Dan Cooper is a test pilot in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Early storylines featured futuristic science fiction themes such as piloting a rocket ship to Mars. However, later stories were more rooted in present-day themes. 
But D.B. Cooper researchers speculate that the hijacker may have chosen an alias based on this fictional character because he may have been exposed to the comic while in the military on tour of duty in Europe, or that he may have been of French-Canadian origin. Coincidentally, some of the comic's storylines seemingly match aspects of the D.B. Cooper case, including jumping out of a plane with a parachute, as well as a ransom being delivered in a knapsack. Also in his hijacking note, the hijacker Dan Cooper specifically asked for $200,000 in $20 bills, but specified that the bills be in U.S. currency. But why would an American citizen even need to specify that? Maybe it was a red herring. Or maybe he wasn't from the U.S. at all. So between 1971 and 2016, the FBI investigated between 800 and 1,000 suspects and still came up empty. So we're going to talk about five of the most compelling suspects. I know I'm going to leave out many of your favorites, so don't forget to please tell me in the comments who you think D.B. Cooper really was. Number 5. Lynn Doyle L.D. Cooper in 2011, Marla Cooper went public with her belief that D.B. Cooper was actually her uncle Lynn Doyle or L.D. Cooper. Marla said that L.D. disappeared after Christmas 1972 and that whenever she would ask her father about her uncle, he would always be vague and change the subject. However, on Christmas in 1995, Marla's father finally admitted to her that L.D. had been hiding since he tried to hijack an airplane. This led Marla to remember her childhood, and she remembered seeing her uncle L.D. arrive at her grandmother's home in Oregon on Thanksgiving Day, 1971, barely conscious and in a blood-soaked t-shirt muttering about how he had hijacked a plane, and how the family's financial problems were now solved. The FBI said they found Marla Cooper's claims credible. She even passed a polygraph test. But many theorists point out that just because Marla believes it, that doesn't make it true. They also find it hard to believe that D.B. Cooper, who was so meticulous in not leaving evidence behind, would use an alias so close to his real name. Additionally, apart from Marla Cooper's recollection, there is zero evidence linking L.D. Cooper to the case, especially because L.D. Cooper didn't have any of the specialized training or knowledge D.B. Cooper demonstrated during the hijacking. Number 4. William J. Smith one of the more recent suspects was William J. Smith, who was suggested in 2018 as a man who had all the necessary qualifications, as well as a financial grudge. Smith was a World War II veteran who had training in multiple aircraft, as well as parachute jumping skills. After his military career, William became a railroad worker, but then as a result of his railroad declaring bankruptcy in 1970, he lost his job and his pension, leaving Smith angry as well as a sudden need for money. One of the most interesting connections to the hijackings was that one of his high school friends who died in World War II was named Ira Dan Cooper which could explain the pseudonym used by the hijacker. The theory was that Smith had pulled off the hijacking using his knowledge of the railroad to parachute and land near the train tracks before stowing away on a train in order to escape undetected. Smith also bears a remarkable resemblance to the witness sketches of D.B. Cooper. Number 3. Barbara Dayton now this one's a little iffy if you ask me, but hey, the FBI took her seriously for a while, so we're going to talk about her. Born Robert Elmer Dayton in 1926, Barbara Barb Dayton transitioned into a woman in 1969 and was reportedly the first trans woman to undergo surgery in Washington State. An avid pilot and skydiver who was active in an aviation group in Pierce County, Washington, Barb kept her past secret from most of her fellow pilots. She did, however, confide in Ron and Pat Foreman, who noted that Barb would become defensive of D.B. Cooper whenever he was discussed among local pilots or anyone who simply dismissed Cooper as a common criminal. However, things came to a head one evening when, as a joke, Ron took a picture of Barb with her hair combed to the side while wearing a pair of sunglasses, which led Barb to confess that she was indeed Dan Cooper. But in order to get away with the crime, Dayton said she came up with the ultimate disguise. As a man who became a woman, she would pose as a man again to pull off the hijacking in order to fool the FBI. Her resemblance was also noted by Barb Dayton's own family. Her daughter, Raina, as well as Barb's niece and sister-in-law, believed that Barb was D.B. Cooper. 
According to family legend, Barb was also immediately recognized by her brother Bill Dayton when he saw the composite photo of D.B. Cooper in the newspaper in the days after the hijacking. There was also no doubt in the mind of Barb's friends that she had the daring and knowledge needed to stage and survive an in-flight parachute jump. However, eventually Barb recanted her story when she discovered that she could still be prosecuted for the hijacking. Number 2. Richard Floyd McCoy Richard McCoy was an Army veteran who served two tours of duty in Vietnam, first as a demolition expert and later with the Green Berets as a helicopter pilot. After leaving the Army, he joined the U.S. National Guard, as well as a devout Mormon, Sunday school teacher, and engineer. Richard Floyd McCoy was the sort of upstanding citizen few would believe was a potential criminal. However, on April 7, 1972, roughly five months after D.B. Cooper's heist, McCoy boarded United Airlines Flight 855, brandishing what later proved to be a paperweight resembling a hand grenade. In an unloaded handgun, he hijacked the Boeing 727, flying from Denver to Los Angeles, and diverted the plane to San Francisco, where he picked up $500,000 in ransom along with four parachutes. After they were airborne again, he too bailed out of the plane in mid flight near Provo, Utah. The circumstances of McCoy's hijacking mirrored Cooper's in most respects, right down to the number and style of parachutes requested in the model of plane hijack. It has also been noted that McCoy resembled a composite drawing of D.B. Cooper and had the military and survival training necessary to plot such a stunt and survive. He also had the tenacity to break out of prison twice after being convicted of the Denver skyjacking and died in a gunfight with FBI agents in July of 1972. A proponent of their claim that McCoy was Cooper was the FBI agent who killed McCoy. He said, when I shot Richard McCoy, I shot D.B. Cooper at the same time. McCoy was questioned regarding D.B. Cooper's crimes after being captured, but refused to confirm or deny anything. While the FBI officially declared McCoy's skyjacking a copycat crime, the similarities in M.O. and other physical evidence have convinced many of the investigators who looked at McCoy's case that he was indeed the man called Dan Cooper. And the number one suspect who most believe was D.B. Cooper is this man, Robert Rackstraw. Rackstraw was featured heavily in the 2022 Netflix series, D.B. Cooper, Where Are You? During the Vietnam War, Rackstraw was a pilot who also specialized in halo jumping, or high-altitude low-open parachute jumping. But also during the Vietnam War and for many years after, he also worked as a spook for the CIA. But while he remained a CIA asset, he was forced to resign from the Army just months before the 1971 D.B. Cooper hijacking, and he was extremely bitter over being kicked out of the Army. When the feds questioned Rackstraw years later, he admitted to the arresting agent that he was fully capable of successfully pulling off the hijacking, but denied it. Rackstraw came to the attention of the Cooper Task Force in February of 1978 after he was arrested in Iran and deported to the U.S. to face explosives possession and check-kiting charges. However, several months later while released on bail, Rackstraw attempted to fake his own death by radioing a false mayday call and telling controllers that he was bailing out of a rented plane over Monterey Bay, California. Police would later arrest him in Fullerton, California on an additional charge of forging federal pilot certificates. The plane he claimed to have dished was found and repainted in a nearby hangar. But investigators quickly noticed his physical resemblance to the D.B. Cooper composite sketches, even though he was only 28 and not in his 40s in 1971. But the FBI eliminated Rackstraw as a suspect in 1979, after no direct evidence of his involvement could be found. However, in 2016, Thomas J. Colbert, an author and investigative reporter, announced that Robert Rackstraw was indeed D.B. Cooper. But when Colbert brought his findings to the FBI, they told him they disagreed. However, mysteriously and coincidentally, the very next day, the FBI closed the case forever. Colbert believes that the FBI was covering for the CIA in Rackstraw, so Colbert sued the FBI for all their documents under the Freedom of Information Act, and he won. So the FBI had to turn over all their files on Rackstraw. 
And those records, in fact, prove that the FBI had suspected Rackstraw was Cooper all along. And Colbert discovered what he says was a cover-up under then-FBI Director James Comey in order to protect the CIA. Still, many believe Rackstraw was always just a con man who enjoyed publicity and took credit for being D.B. Cooper, simply for the purposes of jerking around the FBI. And although it's been 50 years, the surviving flight attendant from the hijacked flight who spoke with Cooper said Rackstraw was too young, and that Cooper had brown eyes and Rackstraw had green eyes. She and other passengers on the flight say Rackstraw wasn't Cooper. Robert Rackstraw died in San Diego, California of natural causes in 2019. And finally, for what it's worth, considering that the mythical D.B. Cooper jumped from a 727 in a pitch black of night in a violent thunderstorm over a dense forest, many believe he never survived the landing and the world has been chasing a ghost for over 52 years. But what do you think? Let me know down below. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.